It's time now, Teague, for the Ian Rappaport Report, brought to you by Kia and by Total Orthopedics, the experts at getting you back to being you. Well, Ian, week six, so we are uh, obviously pumped up about both our Jets and Giants here. Let's step away a little bit, and this is your job here, from the, the local level of um, the, 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 the euphoric nature of fans right now for the Jets and the Giants. So get us away from our local bubble and tell us how much of what we've seen so far is real with the Jets and the Giants. First of all, that hurt you reading playoff times as my team is not in the playoffs. Wow. So I mean, listen, not great. Didn't appreciate it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, you got to have a better team, Ian. Reality. Our reality. bad. Our bad. Reality yeah. sucks. Um, so we'll go one by one. Start with the Giants. They are not a very talented football team. They have some talented players. They are not very talented. But they play really hard and play really well together, and they are very well coached. I have seen worse teams – have good records right so like if they i cannot even believe i'm saying this but if they make the playoffs <laughs> they wouldn't be the worst talented team to make the playoffs but they would be among them uh th- i mean you know it's a team that kind of needs to start over in a lot of places needs to get in some salary cap mm-hmm. health which they are not in but they play hard enough and well enough that i think what we're seeing is real i think yeah. they're not going to finish the season 11 and four six no oh, six now yeah I forgot six yeah but the, the way they play is real. The Jets, I don't know. Um, they have played really well. And I think Zach has played well, you know, when you got to have it two weeks ago and then this past week. Um, th- there's been some promising signs. I think it's going to be a little more up and down for the Jets. But the young talent has flashed really nicely. Yeah, wait, wait, hold on. I just want to follow. I'm sorry, T. But, and I get that. But if you're – Pretty fair that the Giants are or could be among the least talented teams to make the playoffs ever. Why are you more bullish on them to keep going with this and not the Jets, who obviously have more talent? Coaching. Jets are younger. Uh, And it's, you know, young talent is really tough. So, like, there's been times when Zach Wilson has looked really good and I'm kind of watching and people around the NFL and other GMs and evaluators are watching and they go, okay, that's it. Then there's other times when he doesn't look as good. Like, the Jets feel to me like a little more of a roller coaster. Uh, which is okay because the only thing you want out of this season, as we've said, is like, is the future here or is it not? And it's leaning more toward the future is on the team. And and that and that makes a big difference. You know, I think one of the things that you mentioned about the the Giants is 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 the coaching and how they're able to adjust and get the best out of this this veteran team. But when you think about the the job that Joe Shane has in front of him. There are some decisions that are going to be uh, dependent upon how these guys play. Saquon, I mean, he, you can likely keep him for a franchise tag, but if you franchise tag yeah. him and Daniel Jones has a good season, you can't franchise Daniel Jones. Like the decisions that Joe Shane has in the coming future are going to be tough because of how well both Daniel Jones, even though not statistically, but leadership wise, and Saquon Barkley are playing. Yeah, and this is like the best scenario. I know it's weird, but it's the best scenario because. You know, does Saquon get the franchise tag? Like, if he plays like this, it's there. It makes sense. It's not a huge number. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he is probably expecting that would be my guess. So you could do that. And then for Daniel Jones, it's a question of, does he want to be somewhere else or does he want to be here? There is a bridge quarterback extension short-term deal that you can reach with Daniel Jones that doesn't kill you, but that pays him for leading this football team and playing well. It's really just, does he want to stay or does he not? And if he wants to stay, which my guess is he's built this whole thing and gone through it in a terrible way, he probably wants to stay. You can come up with a way to make it work, just like the Bills did when, I don't know if Shane was there yet, but just like the Bills did with Tyrod Taylor a couple of years ago, got to the playoffs, did a little bit of a bridge deal. Like, you can make this work, yeah. just need some finagling. All right, so the big story, and I think we're all curious how the NFL approaches this tonight is the report on ESPN.com that Snyder claims dirt on the owners and Roger Goodell. Uh, I know Jerry Jones is implicated in this in the story, this report, that Snyder basically instructed, according to the report, his law firm to hire private investigators to look into the owners and league execs and that they found a lot of stuff that is not good. Number one, what's your thoughts on this? And do, is this addressed significantly tonight? Uh, I would say, first of all, thoughts on it. Um, Very well-reported article. I do not have independent corroboration of it. I don't know uh, specifically that – sorry, let me send the text I'm talking to. I don't know specifically um, 
you know, the corroboration of that and what was was asked and what was not. Um, I do believe that Jerry Jones is still on Daniel Snyder's side, which I think is an important part of this. The article says otherwise. I believe that he is. Um, I just wonder, I'm going to the league meetings in a week. I wonder if there's enough to turn 24 owners and I don't know that there is, and I still don't know that there is. And I don't know that this turns the tide. It's interesting. It's fascinating. There's a lot there. Mm-hmm. I just don't know that this is the thing that turns the tide. But what about tonight? We tune in to watch this game, and the game's going to be horrendous. When we tune in on Amazon, are we getting so? Are they going to acknowledge this? Got to acknowledge it. It's out there. It's been out there for many, many hours. It's ten thousand words on ESPN. I'm sure they will acknowledge it. I'm sure they will read the denials. They'll read the stuff. They'll read the denials. You got to acknowledge it. And but look, this is part of the landscape of the commanders. It is what it is. With it's been that way for two years, and I think it's just reality. And with the Ian Rap report here on the Fantique and Tierney. Ian, just to reiterate, because listen, I've, I've never considered myself a journalist. I've got some contacts, I've got a few sources, I give opinions. We do a four hour show every day. You are a legitimate journalist who accrues facts and is well sourced and multiple sources to confirm or deny things. I just want you on the record, you think this is a well sourced story? I mean, they talk to a lot of people. There's a lot of sources that say different things. Um, there's some things I disagree with, but at least it seems like they talk to the right people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Good, T. I got you. No, yeah, no, you got to balance. Oh, you're all good. Yep. Okay, 1230. All right, there you go. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, guys. Have Take care. Day, I really appreciate it. All right, there he is, Ian Rappaport. <laughs> 